Good evening. Welcome to the Bristol Community College Student Awards Ceremony. My name is Ben Bauman, Chair of the BCC Awards Committee, and it is truly an honor to welcome all of you. This evening, we are here to recognize students who have demonstrated exceptional academic growth and development, as well as those who have made significant contributions in service and leadership to BCC. At this time, I would like to introduce my distinguished colleagues and presenters for this evening event. To my left, Dr. John J. Spraga, President of Bristol Community College. Mr. James T. Brady, Grady, Chairman of the BCC Board of Trustees. Dr. Sarah Garrett, Vice President of Academic Affairs. Mr. Stephen Oza, Vice President of Students. Dr. Michael J. Vieira, Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs. Ms. Elizabeth McCarthy, Vice President of Resource Development. Mr. Peter Silva, Class of 73, President of the BCC Alumni Association. And to my right, Mr. Tom Grady, Professor of English and Director of the Commonwealth Honors Program. Dr. Bill Kelly, Professor of English, representing the Division of Humanities Education, as Dean Joanne Preston could not be with us tonight. Dr. Frederick Rocco, Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs and Dean of Behavior and Social Sciences. Mr. William Berardi, Dean of Business and Information Management. Ms. Patricia Dent, Dean of Health Sciences. Dr. Peter Schuyler, Dean of Mathematics, Science, and Engineering. And Ms. Sarah Morell, Dean of Developmental Education. I would also like to introduce this evening's American Sign Language interpreters, Kaylee McKenna and Elizabeth Nadolski. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank the members of the BCC Awards Committee for their tremendous support and assistance throughout the semester to make this event possible. I'll read their names, but please hold, their applause. Please hold your applause. Jacqueline Berry, Kathleen Burns, Suzanne Chadwick, Donna Davis, Phyllis Dickens, Bernadette Driscoll, James Emond, our student representative Joseph Frias, Michael Geary, Eileen Harrington, Stephen Martin, and Nancy Moxon. Many thanks to the faculty, staff, and students who submitted nominations and to our student volunteers for handing out programs tonight. There are numerous faculty, administrators, and staff in the audience this evening, as well as members of our Board of Trustees, who I'd like to recognize for their dedication and support to Bristol Community College and our students. We thank you very much. It is now my pleasure to introduce the President of Bristol Community College, Dr. John J. Sprague. Well, thank you, Ben, and good evening, everyone. What a wonderful evening. This is one of my favorite evenings of the year. We celebrate excellence, and uh, I want to address my remarks to the award winners uh, for the distinguished service that you've provided, uh, your meritorious work uh, that has earned you this place tonight. Uh, we're very proud of you, and uh, to, you uphold a tradition of excellence that we have at Bristol Community College, and you should be very proud. Wherever you go, you will be flying the BCC flag uh, with these awards that you have. You know, uh, it's not easy uh, to, uh, in this society, uh, someday I always wanted to write a multi-volume work on the problems of the sin of envy. Okay, envy uh, to me is a perfidious evil uh, in the, our society because it is envy that uh, people who are envious are because they cannot meet the standards of excellence uh, and they therefore attack those standards. And uh, uh, that's why I feel it's such a uh, terrible uh, blight on our uh, society. They should be very proud of academic excellence and the work that you have done as typified tonight. 
um, rather than be criticized or uh, somehow the standards are, are uh, attacked and uh, we sink, we could sink uh, to mediocrity uh, as a result. So we want to uphold those standards at Bristol Community College, which we have a long tradition, 46 years now, of uh, excellence at BCC and will continue uh, forever uh, with that standard. And don't let anyone uh, ever uh, try to detract from those great standards that we have. So I thank you. I, uh, I want to uh, also say that you, your excellence has uh, served as a model for our other students and everyone out the campus. We've watched you exceed, excel and succeed in your studies and in your work, and that has been a great model, not only for the people at the campus, but also for um, your friends, neighbors, loved ones. People have watched you excel, to sacrifice, to make the commitment that you have made uh, for excellence, not to deviate from those standards, and you don't even realize the uh, the great model that you have become, each of you has become uh, for the people that you don't even know, but they've seen you, and, and uh, uh, they're going to, uh, that, that model is going to rub off on them, and we hope you, you hear there's uh, some little ones in the audience, and it's, it's going to make a big difference for them this evening. So I thank you, uh, we're very grateful to you, it's been an honor for BCC to host you, and to have you on our campus, and to uh, keep the standards of excellence going. Before I leave, I, I wanted to also acknowledge, and I hope uh, we can all be grateful for the sponsorship that we have been uh, given by Bristol County Savings Bank. This night is partly brought to you by uh, our great friends in the society, that the community that provide help for the college, and the Bristol County Savings Bank has been a wonderful supporter, and I thank them for this evening. And now, it's my honor to serve, uh, to introduce to you uh, the person who is serving as our chair of the Board of Trustees at Bristol Community College, uh, James Grady Esquire. James? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the uh, Board of Trustees, I want to welcome you and congratulate all of you who are receiving uh, honors and awards uh, this evening. Uh, we also would like to uh, uh, congratulate the parents, the uh, spouses, significant others of these awardees because we all know it takes more than just the individual. They have to have a family, a setting of, of, and support system, and you have uh, graciously uh, done that. So you should be very proud, and those of uh, who are going to be uh, graduating at commencement, you'll probably burst with pride as you see them cross the stage. So I'd like to uh, just very briefly, uh, uh, with your permission, uh, bring some words from a uh, very famous uh, poet, Robert Frost. Mr. Frost can't be with us for obvious reasons, uh, <laughs> but uh, he has written a few things down and uh, I'd like to share them with you because I believe they're appropriate uh, for this evening. For those of you who aren't too familiar with uh, Mr. Frost, he's a world famous uh, poet, probably the most famous poet in the history of the United States. He was our United States Poet Laureate uh, for the period 1958 through 59, and he uh, for many years taught poetry at Amherst College and Middlebury uh, College. At the age of 86, he was the first poet to ever participate in a presidential inaugural on June, uh, January 20th, 1961, at the invitation of President John F. Kennedy. And some of you in here may, as I do, remember him in the wind and he lost his papers, they blew away, and he just recited some poem from memory that wasn't on the program. But, uh, He's, uh, during, and during his lifetime, he received, count them, 40 honorary degrees from colleges and universities throughout the country and uh, Canada and uh, England, uh, Great Britain as well. He is famous for this quote, and this is easy and you don't have to really uh, uh, memorize this, you can just think about it. Uh, the quote goes like this, in three words, I can, I can sum up everything I've learned about life. 
it goes on. <laughs> A little slow, I guess. <laughs> Perhaps his most famous uh, poem is The Road Not Taken. The poem was written in 1915. Uh, little, little old, but its message holds true today and for this evening. It's about the choices we have in our lives. And it goes like this. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveler, long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Thank you and good luck. Thank you, Chairman Grady. And now Mr. Peter Silva, class of 73, president of Bristol Community College Alumni Association will announce the alumna of the year. Thank you. I know you're ready to rock and roll out there. From your uh, soon-to-be alumni association, uh, a smart salute to you honorees and uh, awardees, and uh, smooth sailing to you. The alumnus of the year. Uh, this award is given to a member of the BCC alumni community who through professional achievement or personal dedication has demonstrated an outstanding commitment and or accomplishment to his or her field or to the community. She graduated in 1971. It's not easy when you're already working full time and you have to bring uh, three kids along with you to class. As an aside, those three kids are now all graduated from college. Um, that determination ultimately resulted in Joanne. Uh, she obtained her associate's degree in secretarial science from BCC. She went on to obtain her bachelor's degree in business science, uh, de designated magna cum laude. She finished magna cum laude from Eastern Nazarene College. Uh, let us quickly forward now to May 9th, Monday of 2011. It's the BCC uh, Swing for Education Golf Tournament. And look who's on the Save the Date postcard with Jackie Anfield. It's our alumnus of the year, who I will announce shortly. Joanne, she's an avid golfer. She supports the BCC Foundation uh, golf tournament with a company's corporate sponsorship. She recruits teams for the tourney, uh, and she has supported the golf tournament this way for a number of years. And she has helped the golf tournament become the fundraising success that it is today. Um, now there's been a dedication and commitment to the BCC community uh, by Joanne in the intervening years also. One letter of recommendation about Joanne reads, that for over 30 years, Joanne has been BCC's shining star of this South Coast community. A second letter uh, stated in part, uh, she hasn't written a book, and she hasn't discovered a vaccine. She's just an ambassador for the college. 
Suffice it to say that Joanne has done all of the volunteering uh, that there is at BCC. She's uh, chaired fundraising fashion shows back in the day. She's been a member of the BCC Alumni Association. She has chaired the, the gala, the foundation gala. And uh, she's been active with phonathons and all kinds of related fundraising activities. The alumnus of the year for 2011, the vivacious and the supportive Joanne Marshall. Say a few words, Joanne. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't believe that when I was reading. I was wondering who that was. I can't believe that they're actually saying all those nice things about me. First of all, I want to congratulate all the graduates tonight. I hope that you go on to be very successful and that you continue to get your education like I did, even though it took me a little longer than I'm sure it's going to take you. I want to thank President Strega, distinguished members and guests, and certainly the um, staff that's helped to put me here today. My husband insisted that I write a few notes, but after reading that, it's, it's a little scary. So I started writing and I got carried away. So if you have a little bit of time, I'm just going to read a few notes. <laughs> I'm very honored and very excited to be here tonight. And I certainly thank the committee who chose me above all the deserving candidates. I have successfully graduated from BCC, but it was many, many years ago, and we certainly didn't have this beautiful campus. I was very fortunate to attend BCC and to receive an education that actually helped me throughout my career. It actually encouraged me to continue to go forward and to continue my education, even though, as I say, it took me a little longer than most people. BCC for me was a stepping stone, and I was able to achieve not only a quality education, but an affordable education at that time. When I was growing up, my parents said that the girls in the family, and there were five of us, certainly didn't need to be educated, because they would always find someone to support them. Of course, that's the old thinking in the old days. Girls did not need an education. But I was very stubborn. French, Irish, English, and I insisted I was going to go to school. So my father insisted that if I was going, I was going to pay for it myself. Therefore, we had BCC, which was affordable for me. Of course, at the campuses in those days were down on Durfee Street and St. William Center. So you ended up walking quite a ways, going back and forth to the school and going to different campuses just to finish your education. But since I was the oldest girl in the family, I had to clear the path for the future for not only my sisters, but also the three daughters that I presently have today. I felt it was very important to be educated and self-sufficient. I did not want to be supported, and I wanted my children to know that they could always support themselves as long as they were educated. I attended BCC after graduation back in 19 whatever. <laughs> at that time, I was working full time actually at the phone company. I was working nights. I actually had to have my parents sign a letter so I could work nights because you weren't allowed to work there unless you were 21 years old to work nights. So they signed a letter. I could work nights so I could go to school during the day. I loved BCC. It was so such a wonderful school, and you were actually a person. You weren't a number. Everybody knew your name. I never, ever wanted to leave BCC. After I graduated from BCC, I got married and always had the intention of finishing school someday. Unfortunately, that day came many, many days, many, many years later, having three daughters, a full-time job at the phone company, and no time for school until the kids got a little older. Now, as the kids did get older, I decided to go back to school, but I didn't want to go too far, so I came back to BCC after already having graduated. I started another degree, and I brought the three kids with me. Many times when I was in the computer lab, they'd have an announcement, whoever left those kids in the cafeteria, please come and get them. <laughs> I didn't want to admit they were mine. 
and I couldn't find babysitters, so actually, they actually came to BCC with me. I decided to take business courses and to finish, try to finish my degree. Well, that was only the beginning, because after that, I also went to SMU, which is now UMass Dartmouth. I went to Curry College. I went to Dale Carnegie, and I went to probably every course that they had at the phone company. I had more courses and classes and credits than you can possibly imagine. I probably had over five years of college, but I didn't have the actual BA. That took me many, many years later. Actually, it took me till 1998 when I retired from the phone company. I finished going to school again nights, this time at Eastern Nazarene in Quincy, to get my BSBA. And I graduated with a, my degree, magnum cum laude, because I wanted my kids to be proud of me. When I was going to school, my girls were in college at the time, and they said, Mom, you're the only person we know that opens a book. Of course, I had flashcards. I was a lot older. I didn't have the memory from the youth, but I insisted that I finish that education. You know, now I look back many years later and say the, between BCC being the stepping stone and, and the uh, telephone company, I was able to get a good education and to move forward. I'm, in 1998, when I retired from the phone company, I was also an established real estate broker. I've been a real estate broker all these years and a very successful real estate broker. I would not have been able to do that without the education that I received at BCC. Although it took me till 1998 to receive my degree, it was a degree that was very important to me and my family. And I hope for you people that you do continue and don't wait as long as I did. It's easy for me now to say the best thing I ever did was go to BCC. Thank you all, and please try to enjoy the rest of your evening. Congratulations, Joanne. Tom Grady. Professor of English and Director of the Commonwealth Honors Program will now present the Commonwealth Honors Program Scholars. Joanne Petrasso will assist Mr. Grady with the Honors Courts. Please be seated. Good evening. Uh, the Commonwealth Honors Program is an enhancement program to any student who has a very high GPA that wants to pursue their learning at a higher level. Uh, the program is uh, designed to have four additional learning experiences in addition to a student's associate's program. What the program isn't is it isn't about being perfect with your grades, although your grades have to be high. It isn't about showing up, but it does involve being active in the academic community. But what it does do is it starts to formulate a part of a student's identity that is called a scholar. Students who complete this program have to go through so many different processes that are vetted by a 14-member board of faculty, staff, and students that by the end of this process, they can demonstrate by the Department of Higher Education that they have authentic intellectual aptitude. And so, it is my pleasure and with deep, humble pride to introduce to you these extraordinary individuals who are graduating as Commonwealth Honors Scholars. Sure, you clap for them. <laughs> Jennifer Avery. <laughs> Richard Carbonaro. <laughs> Micah Conti. Sergio Cuna. Keisha Gordon.
Barbara Lamond. Melissa Massey. Sarah Mercer. Ashley Routenstrout. Catherine St. Laurent. And Samantha Therian. The John J. Spraga PhD Honors Book Award was established in 2010 to recognize the 10th anniversary of Dr. Spraga's presidency. It is given to an exemplary Commonwealth Honors student. The first recipient is Micah Conti. I'd now like to invite President Sprague to the mic. Thank you, Professor Grady. This year, uh, we would like to honor a recipient of a Jack Kent Cook Undergraduate Transfer Scholarship. It's a national award and a highly competitive across the country. And it's my honor to announce that the winner this year is Christopher Wilmer. Ms. Elizabeth McCarthy, Vice President of Resource Development, will present the BCC Foundation Scholarships now. The BCC Foundation is pleased to present the All USA Academic Team Scholarship, which is co-sponsored by the Phi Theta Kappa International Honor Society in the American Association of Community Colleges. Nominees are chosen for their outstanding academic achievement as well as their significant college and community service. The recipient this year is Sergio Cunha. Basil and Teresa Maravella Scholarship is awarded to Natalie Mendes. The BCC Foundation Quest Scholarship is awarded to Anita DeBrito. Bristol Community College Art and Design Award in Foundation is awarded to two recipients. The first one is Jennifer Moore. <laughs> and the second recipient is Bethany Brazil. The Bristol Community College Art and Design Award in Visual Design is awarded to two recipients. The first is Jennifer Camara. And the second is Nelson Mello. The Captain James D. Crossan Scholarship is given to a student in criminal justice who has achieved academic excellence. The recipient is Andrew Ryder. 
This year's Charles E. Croshore Jr. Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Curtis St. Germain. The Charles Markovich Memorial Scholarship recipient is Tamara Bryant. The Computer Programming Award for Programming Research Excellence is awarded to Aaron Lyons. The Computer Forensic Award for Exceptional Analytical Research Accomplishment is awarded to Eugene Oliveira. The Computer Forensics Award Forensics Award for Engagement is presented to Amanda Johnson. The Computer Forensic Award for Outstanding Contributor to Interactive Learning Environment is presented to Paul Donovan. The Computer Programming Award for Outstanding Performance is awarded to Andrew Downing. The Computer Programming Award for Programming Innovation is awarded to two recipients. The first one, Robert Gonsolo. The second recipient is Mark Davidian. The CRC Book Award for Excellence in Chemistry is presented in recognition of outstanding scholastic achievement in chemistry during the freshman year. The recipient is Erin Stone. The Diana Gallant Yarkin Memorial Scholarship is given to a freshman majoring in office technology. The recipient is Elizabeth Albergaria. The Edward Terrell Smith Memorial Scholarship is presented in recognition of high, economic, high econo academic achievement and community service. The recipient is Sarah Mercer. The Game Programming Innovation Award is presented to Nathan Ledoux. The recipients of the Jeanette Denning Writing Awards. In first place, Kathleen Wood. Second place, Damiana Bertu. And in third place, Sebastian Clarkin. The Jesse E. Richardson Art Award is given to an art program student who has excelled in painting. The recipient is Devin McLaughlin. <laughs> the John G. Fonseca Memorial Scholarship is given to a non-traditional student who has demonstrated scholastic merit. The recipient is Carlton George. The recipient of the Katia Lund International Student Award is Carolina Cusick. The recipient of the Kenneth M. Candeus Memorial Scholarship is Stephanie Rollins. The Multimedia Development Award is presented to Brian Ferreira. The outstanding astronomy student in Astronomy 111 is Timothy Medeiros. The outstanding astronomy student in Astronomy 112 is Philippe Estrella. 
The Professor Marion Wilner Art Book Award is presented to an outstanding art transfer student who has demonstrated creativity and excellence in drawing and design. The recipient is Patricia Burke. <laughs> the, the Rappuccini Retort Scholarship is awarded to Richard Johnson. The recipient of the Raymond J. LaVertue Senior Scholarship is Michael Lage. The Robert Sherman Memorial Scholarship is given to a student who has demonstrated excellent in, excellence in chemistry. The recipient is Micah Conti. The Student Math League Competition Award recipients are first place round one and team member Morgan Mira. Second place round one and team member Justin White. First place round two and team member Rachel Snyder. Second place, round two, and team members. There are two, Ryan Hansen and Heather Vieira. The team members are James Balduza, Samantha Lambert, Richard Medeiros and Julia Moreira. Congratulations to all of the recipients. I would now like to introduce Ms. Sarah Morell, Dean and Dean of Developmental Education, and she will present the Service Awards and the Exemplary Writing Awards. Good evening. The award for exemplary student writing in the disciplines showcases the writing of a single student from each of the college's divisions. Students' work was nominated by a faculty member and judged by a committee from the respective divisions. This year's recipients are Division One, Jennifer Avery. Division two, Micah Conti. Division four, Crystal Tremblay. And Division Six, Kathleen Wood. On behalf of President Barack Obama, Bristol Community College is proud to recognize members of the college community who have successfully completed a minimum of 100 hours of community service with the President's Volunteer Service Award. The college's civic engagement program has been granted authority by the President's Council on Service and Civic Participation to serve as a certifying organization for this award. This council was established in 2003 by President George W. Bush to recognize and encourage volunteerism throughout the country. The Bronze Award recipients are Rachel Collins, <laughs> T. 
Tammy Durrigan. <laughs> Jessica Johnson. <laughs> and Venetius Pimental. <laughs> the Silver Award recipient is Nicole Collins. The Gold Award recipients are Tamara Bryant, Jason Gonsalves, Melissa Massey. and Christopher Wilbur. <laughs> the President's Call to Service Life Award for those with 4,000 hours or more of volunteer service is awarded to Christine Dufresne. The Newman Civic Fellow Award is presented to Nicole Collins. Congratulations to all of the award recipients. I'd like to introduce Dr. Bill Kelly, Professor of English, who will present the first curriculum award of the evening for Division One. Thanks, Sarah. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. My job is to introduce the curriculum awards. Um, they're given to students who are recognized for the characteristics of reliability, perseverance, and high academic quality. This award expresses the college's confidence in the recipient as he or she enters the world of business, community service, or higher education. The curriculum award recipients for the Division of Humanities and Education are, for Art Transfer Fine Arts, we have two recipients, Andrew Marshall, and Ashley Rotenstrosch. For Deaf Studies, C print option, Aaron McNamara. <laughs> Deaf Studies, Early Childhood option, Lynn Molica. Deaf Studies, Interpreter Option, Diane Boulanger. For Elementary Education, we have four recipients, Donna Frank. Helen Gabriel. <laughs> Bernadette Kelleher. <laughs> and Penny Sullivan.
for liberal arts, math, and science option, Nathan Diogo. Liberal Arts Professional Option, we have two recipients, Micah Conti. And Bryce Lipscomb. Congratulations to all the recipients. And now I'd like to introduce the next presenter, my friend, Dr. Frederick Rocco, Dean of Division II and Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs. Good evening. Thank you. I must do a math lecture before I read out the names and it will only take a minute. You're smart people. The sound of your applause is directly to proportional to how you feel about your student here on stage. So, are we all on the same page? <laughs> Very good. That's better. The curriculum award recipients for the Division of Behavioral and Social Sciences are, in criminal justice, Laura Barros. Kimberly Elliott. Do I get to accept if they're not here? No. Michael La Lage. Kyle Medeiros. Baton zero. Ryan Sullivan. Leisha Vargas Mora. In culinary arts, baking, and pastry arts, Allison Lacasse. <laughs> Gerontology certificate, Heather Robillard. <laughs> Office Administration, Legal Administrative Assistant, there are two recipients. Natasha Kajan and La Casa Rodriguez. For parallel, I'm sorry, not parallel, we're back to mathematics there. For paralegal certificate, Jacqueline Pereira. And lastly, for Thanatology Certificate, there are two recipients, Christina Amaral and Christopher Hansen. Congratulations to all the recipients in Behavioral and Social Sciences. Done. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. William Barati, Dean of Business and Information Management. He will present the Curriculum Awards for Division Three. Good evening to everyone. The Curriculum Award uh, recipients for Division for the uh, Division Three Business and Information Management are for Business Administration um, Accounting Option. There are four: Jane Goodwin, <laughs> Dusali Machi. Christine Paquita. <laughs> J. 
Joan Sullivan. Business Administration General Management Option, Matthew Leonard. <laughs> Business Administration Transfer, Samantha, there are three, Samantha Therian. Joseph Mello the third. Yupin White. Computer Information Systems Computer Networking, Alan Cunha Jr. And Andrew Highnote. For general studies, there are two, Justin Boulier. <laughs> Rocco Spinoza. General Studies Health Science Option, Christina Amaral. <laughs> Office Administrative Administration Executive Administrative Assistant, Fatima Borges. <laughs> and Denise Jalakor. <laughs> Office Support Certificate, Maria Barboza. <laughs> Office Technology Management Certificate, Erin Andrews. This concludes the Curriculum Awards for Division Three. Congratulations to all the recipients. I would now like to introduce Patricia Dent, Dean of Health Services, who will present the Curriculum Awards for Division Four. It is my pleasure to present the Curriculum Awards for the Division of Health Sciences. We have two recipients for Clinical Laboratory Science, Samantha Paolo, <laughs> and Lisa Fay. For dental hygiene, there are three recipients. Ashley Vonuka. <laughs> Laura Ward. Priscilla Wicks. For Medical Assisting Certificate, Amy Mazaros. Medical Transcription Certificate, Deborah Mello.
there are four recipients for nursing. Anna Carvello, <laughs> Alicia Gardner, <laughs> Bethany Gendro, <laughs> and Lindsay Medeiros. Congratulations to all the recipients for Division IV. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Peter Schuyler, Dean of Mathematics, Science, and Engineering, who will present the Curriculum Awards for Division V. Thank you, Pat. Good evening. It's my pleasure to present the Curriculum Awards for the Division of Mathematics, Science, and Engineering. The Curriculum Award for Engineering Technology and Architectural Structural Option goes to Carlos Santos. The Curriculum Award for Engineering Technology, the Civil Technology Option goes to Sandra Belli. Curriculum Award for Engineering Technology Environmental Option goes to Amanda Kentara. The Curriculum Award for Engineering Technology Mechanical Option goes to Matthew Keller. And the Curriculum Award for Engineering Transfer, Engineering Science Transfer goes to Kate Buck. And to Justin White. Congratulations to all the Curriculum Award recipients, especially those from my division, Division 5. <laughs> it's my distinct pleasure to present the next uh, presenter, the Chief Academic Officer of Bristol Community College, Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dr. Sarah Garrett. a wonderful night. Oh, yes. Next to commencement, it's right around the corner. Are you excited? <laughs> and now, it's my pleasure to present the Academic Achievement Awards. The Academic Achievement Awards are granted to those students graduating with an associate's degree who have earned a 4.0 grade point average. Woo! As of May 1st, 2011. That's incredible. And the recipients are Justin Alexander. Alan C. 
Acuna, Jr. Ch Sharon Farinacci. Jason Hall. Leslie Harvey. Nathan Ledoux. Tracy Ledoux. Shannon Otto. Diane Robillard. Lisa Rogers. David Smith. And Justin White. Congratulations on this extraordinary accomplishment. 4.0, 4.0, everyone. And now, and now, I have the honor of presenting to you the Valid Victorian. The Valid Victorian is conferred upon one graduating student who demonstrates academic and service excellence. And this student represents all of you students and the entire class and will present the Valedictorian Victorian address. The class of 2011 Valedictorian Victorian is Christopher Wilbur. Wonderful. And now, I'd like to bring forth Dr. Michael Vieira, Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs, my right hand, who will present the Bronze Shield Awards. Michael. Thank you. She's so shy, isn't she? We got, we, got, we got to work on that a little bit. It's my pleasure to present the Bronze Shield Award. This is an award given to students who have provided continuous, outstanding service to a student club or organization of the college. And when you consider how busy all of you are in terms of life and family and work and academics, this is a remarkable uh, award for sure. Uh, the recipients are Christian Fellowship, Larissa Garcia. For Clinical Laboratory Club, Rumana Udin. For Club Theater, 
Colleen Kiyu. Dental Hygiene, Kayla Alves, and Michaela Grimes. For the Medical Assisting Club, Amy Mazaros. The Tudor Club, Sherry Niachoka. And for the Visual Arts Club, Jennifer Avery. Congratulations to all of the Bronze Shield Award recipients. And now Steve Oza, the Vice President of Students, will present the Student Silver Shield and the Scepter and Scroll Awards. Thank you, Michael. Good evening, everyone. Just one quick minute before we get into these. We've, we've presented to you tonight a lot of students, and these are the, this is the future. This is our future, this is the country and the world's future, and any and many of these students will be the future leaders. But the next few awards that we are about to give out really exemplifies those students who have, who have exemplified to us those characteristics of service and leadership. And so I really want you to take note of some of these names, some of which you've already seen. The Silver Shield Award is given to students who have made significant contributions to BCC and are recognized for rendering outstanding service of a consistent high quality to the college. As students receive their award, please remain standing on stage to be honored as a group. There are a number of these. Jennifer Avery. <laughs> Nicole Collins. Andrew Downing. Tammy Durgan. Mariano Gomes. H. Michael Lasco. <laughs> Brittany Normandon. <laughs> Mackenzie Reed. And one who couldn't be here, Hunter Parent Wetmore. <clears throat> These are your Silver Shield recipients and some of our future leaders. <clears throat> and continuing, we now do the Scepter and Scroll Award. That is the most prestigious of our awards. Membership in the Scepter and Scroll Society is given to students who have provided consistent and outstanding contributions of leadership and service to Bristol Community College. The recipients are installed in perpetuity in the Scepter and Scroll Society. And once again, recipients, as you receive your award, please stay on stage to be recognized as a group. The first, Tamara Bryant. <laughs> J. 
Joseph Fries. Andrew Hino. And Jeffrey Thomas Griffin. Scepter and Scroll Society recipients, congratulations. And our final presentation of the evening, the President's Award. And for that, I would like to call up our President, Dr. John Sprague. The President's Award, known as the Mason Shield, is presented each year to a graduate who has rendered the highest quality service to the college and has demonstrated outstanding leadership. The name of each recipient is inscribed on a plaque which is located permanently at the college. And this year, 2011 recipient is Joseph Fryer. Sabrega. My sincere thanks to all of the presenters this evening. Congratulations to all of the award recipients. One more round of applause, please, for everyone. And while we're doing rounds of applause, uh, Ben has been uh, acknowledging everyone else who helped him to get here tonight to, pre to prepare for this evening. But how about a round of applause for the chair, Ben Bauman. Okay, okay, enough clapping. Let's go celebrate. Uh, this concludes the awards presentations, and now it is time to celebrate. Please join us in the Commonwealth College Center for a festive reception in your honor, prepared by Chef Caresimo and students in the culinary arts program. Musical entertainment will also be provided by the Greg Conray Trio. So we'll see you over there. Thank you for all coming and showing your support. Have a great evening. <laughs>